custom cup this time around. Oh. All right. Can you hear me okay? Should I put buds in? Yeah, no, you're good. Cool. Are you ready? Yes, sir. No. Hey, everyone, this is the Nips and Sips podcast featuring me. I'm Dr. Jeremy Boyd and my uh, partner in crime over there, Dr. Brandon Cruz. We're back and better than ever. Uh, we've been busy with a lot, a lot of things. So sorry for the hiatus there. Um, but uh, yeah, you should be excited for all the things to come, but let me pass it off to Brandon. Brandon, how's it been? Long time no see on this. Yeah, man. Uh, real long time. How's everybody doing today? Uh, it has been a while. You know, today's going to be kind of just a re-intro uh, episode podcast. Um, we'll talk about, you know, kind of what we've been up to, uh, obviously with, with COVID um, been going on and, you know, Jeremy was finishing up his fellowship um, training and I was helping him with that. And we've had some other things in the works. So we'll kind of fill, uh, fill our audience in on kind of what we've been doing. Uh, and then we'll, um, you know, fill you in on where we're looking to go with our next uh, few episodes and kind of go from there. But I guess we'll start with our normal drink intro. So, Jer, what you yeah. got? Uh, I have uh, Alien Church uh by a tire hands brewing company which i heard is one of the more legendary uh, uh breweries out in pa or more pa for anybody's interested uh my student keith uh walsh who gave me this uh this can on his last day uh he's this is his favorite beer a good ipa i've had a couple ones super uh refreshing i'm a big fan of this beer and drinking it out of my Hold on, my plain chess, not checkers cup given by my other student, Rachel Miller, who uh, just finished up and her, her Tampa Bay Lightning just won the Stanley Cups. But it's a common saying that we say in, in the clinic are really just me. Uh, when I do something that seems more smarter than I really am, I say plain chess, not checkers over here. But I'm going to pour this puppy out, baby. Up oh, and I have spillage. So that's, I'm rusty, dude. I'm rusty. It's been, it's been too long, but... Look at this poor, 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 awful. What about you, Brandon? I like it. Well, quick question: Do you even know how to play chess? Because I, uh, I do. I don't I know do. How to play chess at all. Oh, so. checkers! I don't know if I know how to play checkers in all. Checkers, I'm, a, I'm an assassin in checkers. <laughs> oh no! I used to of course, play you were like... saying it's novice. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I can only remember only playing checkers maybe once or twice in my life but uh chess i used to play with my brother a lot and uh he demolished me um pretty handily i don't think i beat him more than maybe once but i was young I was a young yeah, lad that, was, that, that like cerebral that. cortex their frontal lobe wasn't uh, fully developed at that time yet but, yeah, uh, he took advantage while i could it becomes better than the teacher so i'm sure yeah. he played now Exactly. I'm faster than him now. I hope if I don't think he ever listens to this, but he knows that I've beat him in a foot race. So I got him physically. So you can talk all the shit you want if he's not listening. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Scrub, short little dude. (laughs) (laughs) Good text message from like, hey, asshole. (laughs) I was listening. So I have a uh, little curveball for the audience today, breaking the routine a little bit from uh, my usual. Exciting. Um, so I actually messed up though because I'm not used to this. Before the show, I already poured poured my drink and I didn't do what you did. I'm actually drinking a beer today. Whoa! Uh, oh. hard, Hardwire. It's uh, uh, oh. my second favorite beer. I'm not a big beer nice. guy, but I've recently got into more stouts and porters. This is oh, a hazelnut choice. coffee porter uh, awesome. from Jeremy's beloved Axe and Arrow uh, Brewery, which is across the street from his office. Uh, if you see, I, I poured my drink already in the lovely oh. Axe and Arrow mug or cup that I lovely. got. Uh, we were hold, hosting a course. What was it? The Spinal Manette? No, Cervical Thoracic course, right? In, in uh, March or something. Anyway, a few months back. And we went there for some drinks. And uh, I don't like IPAs or sour beers or anything. So I tried, uh, tried this porter and I liked it. So I, I bought a, uh, a four pack or whatever. And I was holding on to it for the episode. Nice. Uh, a little, uh, little special guest. And that was my second favorite. I have my favorite that I will um, sprinkle in one of these shows randomly. You guys won't know when it's coming. Uh, uh, two, so two episodes of beer. Oh. That, yeah, that, that's what I wanted. But I have, uh, I have some good new, um, I'd say, liquors right, or beverages uh. that uh, I've gotten as gifts. So I'm, I'm lucky for those. And I'll pay homage to 
you know, the people who have gotten me in the future episodes. So that's kind of what's going on. But cheers to you. Uh, cheers. Should I rate this? I don't. Yeah, yeah, you got to rate it. I know, you I'm, have not, to rate um, I'm not good at, at rating. Um, yeah, it's the first number go, that pops into your mind. Yeah, I'm going to go eight. I'll give a flat mm-hmm. eight. And, <laughs> and we'll go from there. I'm not I'm not used to rating here. But trying something different. Yeah. A little, little curveball for That's the audience. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That is literally the number I was thinking for mine. It was like, I'm just going to go with eight. This start off. Bring it, but so we got two eights today. That's awesome. All right. Very nice. Oh, man. Um, All right. That's cool. I'm excited for that next beer. Uh, and, and, and other news of, of beer related. Mm-hmm. A wife is officially an influencer. Uh, nice. Yeah. And by a brewery. By uh, a brewery? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll forget which one, but they're sending her beer to do like a post or something. So it's kind of crazy that she got picked. Yeah, I was going to say, know, we have this. Picked. She yeah, posting the dogs. That's why. Yeah, that's it. And then, you know, she, I think she put something like, well, what brewery we're on and they picked her up and that sort of stuff. So, and uh, I was like, what the hell? I have the, uh, I have a podcast, hundreds of viewers and listeners. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sponsored. What the hell is that? But I hope okay. maybe we'll get them on there one day. But um, yeah, Brandon, anything, uh, what's going on on your end? Um, yeah, so life. let's see where I'm trying to think we though what, our last podcast was released when April ish right I'm trying to try yeah. to think right we did most of those shootings in uh, the fall time because uh, Jeremy and I were just kind of kind of men on mission to finish out 2020 strong being that 2020 was the year that it was so uh, I think we had a you know handful of courses for IOSMT that we we did last cool. fall um, best ones that, yet. What happened? Our best ones yet. Yeah, They're yeah. Uh, you know, the names starting to get out there, which is which is great. Uh, you were you know in the thick of doing your fellowship training at IAR, uh, which you uh, recently completed. I'll let you talk about that in a little bit. And we had the uh, uh, PT reframe that we were kind of really building up towards uh, in earlier the year that was going on, and you know, it seems like. Uh, you know, a lifetime ago that that happened. Actually, mm-hmm. I was thinking back, but it's only been you know six months. We held that in the beginning of February, mm-hmm. uh, and then after that, you know, we we try to get all our podcasts done to, to kind of give you guys some some content while we uh, kind of went away. Uh, I had two new hires that I was um, you know helping mentor and onboard, and, and you know just kind of helping run the clinic. You know, working in the business um, type of deal, uh, as well as uh, you were coming basically weekly, if not. A couple of times a week to, to do yeah. some mentoring for your fellowship. Mm-hmm. I've had another uh, fellow, uh, which we hope to have him on the show in the future, Anthony Falco. He's a, he's a stud and he's been doing his fellowship with uh, EIM. So it's been a pleasure to have him around and, you know, pick his brain. I have actually two residents that are doing uh, mentoring as well, both at uh, Temple University's residency, Al- Alma Mater for our orthopedic residency. Uh, and then I've had, you know, a handful of students as well. So a lot of mentoring, a lot of, you know, paying it forward, a lot of helping out and things like that. Um, trying to, you know, mold, mold, uh, mold the future profession, uh, in the best way, uh, best way I can. So that's kind of really what I've uh, been into. Oh, and I guess, uh, last but not least been looking into, uh, to another office. So I won't say too much yet because nothing has been officially signed, but hopefully we are, uh, you know, near the finish line there. Awesome. Awesome. Exciting, exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, um, for all you out there, especially students to CIs and uh, mentees to mentors, uh, you don't think it's a lot on the mentor, but it is is pretty taxing to devote the time to teach. Uh, You know, especially Brandon, it's a couple of times per week. He wasn't, you know, you treat like three days a week, kind of come in a couple extra times for me. So something I Greatly appreciate. So all of you out there who are receiving any sort of mentorship, make sure you thank those individuals because it's not as uh, easy as you think. Unless you have one of the CIs out there that literally just say, go, go teach yourself. In that case, uh, besides the independence that they give you, uh, uh, they're probably just reaping the benefits of your note-taking ability. So um awesome things best of luck with all that um so yeah with me uh yeah had a grindy out towards end to finish up fellowship uh kind of uh went went ham there with the hours i was lucky to do most of them under brandon which was an amazing experience picked up some really awesome things uh especially diagnostically 
uh, the benefits of a, of a UPA, which I thought I was doing very well in, uh, got 10 times more enhanced and helped out so many clients of mine. Uh, a lot of other things, exercises that I can go on and on about what I learned with, uh, with Brandon and then Al Anthony too, because it was cool to have some uh, collaborative mentorship sessions with him. I'm excited to have him on board here. And then uh, I got to go with uh, Brad Perry, for who's a faculty as well. Um, he was awesome to, uh, to, to learn under. He's big into the baseball scene. Um, and um, it, was, it was a good time over there. Uh, who else do I have this thing? I think at the... Uh, well, yeah, that, that was it. pretty much got to go around Texas and uh, hang out with a lot of those guys and learn under them. And uh, Ben Volkman was the other other mentor of mine. Uh, it was cool to be in the almost a surgeon owned practice, but kind of taught like treating the way that we should be treating, which was pretty surprising. Um, you know, I thought it was like, you know, those type of places, you know, there it's going to be kind of a factory line, but he was able to be part of the team that kind of revitalized the place. And they had a basketball court inside their facility. So that was always fun. Uh, but learn a ton from him uh, and learn a lot about MSIs and Shirley Sarman and that sort of stuff, which helped out my clinical stuff. So in other news, yeah, I also brought on another therapist uh, and uh, she was she was doing well. Unfortunately, got a little bit of a boo-boo. We see a lot of ACLs at my place and she, accent, she uh, happened to have an injury to her own. Uh, so that kind of sucked me back into the clinic a little bit. Uh, not in a bad way. Shouldn't say sucked me back in. I do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, training a lot more than I've been used to of late, but, uh, soon she'll be back and back and better than ever. And now gets the experience of being the patient, especially with something that we see so often. I think that's only going to make her, you know, arguably probably potentially one of the greatest ACL therapists, uh, in the future ahead of us. Um, and then, um, yeah, we got some exciting things. Uh, you know, Brandon and I are, uh, potentially wrapping up a, more business mentorship coaching thing, which should be hopefully released in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll release more information on that once it comes out, but kind of want to, you know, lead the next generation of high clinical expertise and, and get into the business side of things. So that's some exciting things I'm doing. And hopefully as well as Brandon, we'll be working on a second office in the short period. So a lot, a lot of fun things. And then, uh, yeah, excited to get the podcast up and going again. So, you know. yeah, it, it's been good. I wanted to circle back to um, I had forgotten when you had just mentioned it uh, that you were able to do some co co mentoring hours or treatment hours with another fellow, and I believe in a couple a couple of the residents were there as well. Uh, so. Um. I'm trying to think who is. I don't, yeah, I think you I don't know if I no. was. Maybe it was a student. Maybe it was just an intern. Students. Yeah. Had, yeah. Had Emmett. Okay. And then Franklin were the, was yeah. there. And I don't remember if maybe yeah. Nick was there once. Was Nick? Yeah. Uh, no, maybe no, once. Nick was there. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I've had so many. It's been such a blur, guys. Literally yeah. people coming in and out. Um, I know Anthony's had some of the residents under kind of his watch, mm -hmm. uh, which to me, I like um you know if if we're able to juggle it the right way which it, it takes some finessing but you know you get three fellows in a room all from different programs all high level uh and we're able to just bounce ideas off each other ask you know you know do an evaluation do a treatment and say hey this is what i'm seeing what are you seeing great you go mm -hmm. this is what i'm seeing what are you seeing anthony goes this is what i'm seeing what are you seeing okay great where are we similar? Where are we different? Not bad or good. You know, no one's right. Uh, I shouldn't say not bad or good. No one's right or wrong, but mm -hmm. it gives us different perspective uh, as we all have like our areas that, that we're, we're stronger and, you know, weaker in, uh, and we are, we all came from different programs. So mm -hmm. I think that was unique um, in itself, being able to be around that environment. Uh, I learned a lot too, you know, I, I know I was the, the uh, mentor, but I definitely was able to learn from you and Anthony still do. And then also, you know, having you guys there with either the entry level interns or Anthony with the other uh, residents, as it's not always my voice. Uh, I have another voice there to either second what I'm saying or disagree with what I'm saying, which I'm totally mm -hmm. cool with. Uh, because 
you know, again, there's no right or wrong, but can you think through things at a higher level is the goal. And you should be able to reflect and and hopefully look at more than one side or more than one vantage point. I think that's the the benefit of this type of training or you know education that we're going after. It mm-hmm. teaches you to get out of that one track mind uh, that you may have uh, been in just from either entry level school or just you know day to day practicing. You get stuck in your own thoughts. It happens to everybody. So mm-hmm. I like mentoring from the the standpoint of you know it keeps me on my toes, but it also gives me somebody else's viewpoint to uh to look into yeah i think it's important that it keeps you honest that you try not to stay biased to things we're always going to have a component of bias it's just is how it is <laughs> but getting so many different perspectives um and different viewpoints it, i can always say i'm like all right i try not to be biased or i try not to kid myself there you go keep pouring my man um i try not to kid myself thinking I know everything because there is a lot to know. And if you can look at it from different people's viewpoints and that sort of stuff, it's great. But it was a nice to see is like, yeah, we came from well, well, two different residencies, I guess, uh, three different fellowships, yeah, uh, similar, I guess, career ish lengths. Um, but, uh, you know, we came to similar, all, you know, similar conclusions. Nobody was way off, but just our different brand of things. Um, and that was, that was some fun. I lo- I really enjoyed that where it was like, oh, we should try this, or I learned this on this. And it was, it was really cool. And I was like, I was, you know, it's been a while since I wrote notes as I like treat throughout the day, but I was like, oh yeah, I gotta keep this for home and that sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was definitely, definitely a rewarding experience. So uh, yeah, hopefully I can get some fellows under me and kind of pick their brains and see where they're at. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we had a, a, a previous episode on it, but um, these days I can't remember anything. Uh, so uh, I think we had talked about it. You would, you would bring a notepad and, ju- and just write things. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, what was the, the benefit to that? And I guess I kind of pose a question out to the audience uh, that I guess you could just answer yourselves or just DM us or if you want, mm-hmm. but, uh, or email us. But, you know, how many uh, how many therapists, you know, take notes throughout the day or, or go home and, and write things down and kind of ponder it? Or are you just kind of are rushing through through your day and, and not reflecting as much as we should have been? So uh, that was something I, I took from Jeremy as uh, I was able to at one point, or at least I thought I was able to just keep everything in my head. But now I, I notice I need to begin to write more things down. So and that was something I noticed. Jeremy had a, a, a but a legal pad, right? A regular white legal pad that he would sit and, and jot things down. Just like concepts, different ideas, especially again, things that was new to me or again, like highlights of, you know, a particular mentorship session and that sort of stuff, because that's raw knowledge and that sort of stuff. I want to make sure I'm capturing it all the way. And um, the, this, will, that'll, this will come to a surprise as my students, because I don't typically in the in the workspace use a notepad but all my students just from all the conversation i think almost every single one of them just naturally i don't tell them hey bring a notepad or not they just all naturally start writing stuff down which is yeah. something i like like oh, it helps them with their planning and you know some of the things that we discuss because i'm like oh you should look this up and that um but especially when i'm in a learning environment and not say i'm not learning from my own experiences or learning from other clinicians in the place or even the students uh, but definitely in those scenarios where um, I'm in the, I guess, the learner role, I'm trying to capture any little nugget of knowledge. And some of your best stuff isn't, you know, in front of a whiteboard and that sort of stuff. It's just a simple conversation, a simple little nugget, simple little twist of something. And if you're not really paying attention to it, you lose a gem. So I um, tried writing down all those many, many gems that I got. Uh, between you know Brandon, uh, Ben, and uh, Brad, there. Oh, three Bs. There, there, go. Go. B. there we go. There we go. Triple B. Trifecta like, B. Uh, it's like the Houston Astros days, they had the killer Bs. It was a Biggio, yeah. Bagwell, and Berkman. Mm. For you baseball fans out there from the uh, early two thousands. Uh, actually, I've always said this, and we're just kind of rambling right now. But uh, I've always wished, you know, with all the talking that we do. And that goes on in our clinics. I, I wish I just had like Gary V, just somebody to follow me around with a, a camera mm. and you can just post it because 
like you said, so much just happens in, in the conversations of things. Uh, and, and not so much the treatment, but you know, all right, you treated the patient. Great. They got better. Uh, maybe they didn't. And then you go off to the side and you just talk, you hash things out. And, and like, that's kind of where the realness kind of happens. Mm-hmm. And we've said that about like, um, conferences and things like that, but something I've started to do lately. And, uh, for the audiences that are, uh, subscribed to IOSMT and kind of our, our newsletter that's not always so frequent but um what i what i'm trying to do over the you know future and i've I've kind of planned it out already for the next few weeks is you know bringing the conversations i'm having with my students or my residents or my fellows and you know offering it to you guys i don't say offering it but you know kind of cueing you guys in or just kind of give uh keeping you guys in a loop um, one, it helps me reflect on, on things. And two, it's just valuable information. You know, even if you disagree with it, great, that's fine. But I think it, it's it's good, uh, a good learner perspective, good reflection uh, perspective. And, you know, someone's going to benefit from it. So uh, I may not have the videos yet. Maybe one day I'll be able to hire somebody to just take videos all day and film me. But um, mm-hmm. maybe I won't because that could get into some trouble. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, some things. But uh, yeah, so that that's something something uh, you know I would like to do. You know, and I think it just kind of helps further the profession. You know, people get to see mm. you know the insight and kind of gain mentorship without having to be mentored type of deal. So, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I can agree more. I think with my first um, postgraduate mentor, Tom, who's on the show here, our best stuff was sitting at the table shooting the shit at the end of the day from a life perspective, but definitely from a clinical side of things, he would hop in, you know, say, hey, try this, try that. But um, it was just that higher level, like just future theories and thoughts. It doesn't even have to be about a specific case, but just kind of rambling on and just yeah. allowing that creativity and discussions and everything like that. And um, yeah, I think that's where so much value it happens. I think it happens, it can happen at any level. I've had some of these conversations with shadowers yeah. where I've been through their undergraduate and I'll talk to them, you know, more than I talk to some PTs. Um, so um, I always believe, I don't really believe in restriction of certain levels of like, how oh, you should treat someone like this or that thing sky's the limit with whoever you're at. Um, just as long as you're open to those dialogues. So, but uh yeah, that's some good stuff. But um, you know, speaking of, I guess, uh, some things, I guess, of 2020, so I guess we talk about uh, COVID and all that. Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can we can pause. I mean, you and I talk all the time, so it's nothing for you and I, but yeah. um, I guess it'd be good for our, our audience to hear and, and maybe just, you know, throwing out some questions and, you know, they can you know, reflect or ask themselves or maybe ask their, their peers or their bosses, uh, you know, how has it affected you? I, I think actually in our mentorship group, you, you posed, was it you or Kyle who posed a question, how has COVID and, and let's bring, let's bring our mentorship to life here uh, and to mm. our audience who, who may not be in on it. Uh, what was it, What was this question? How has COVID affected you? How has it changed your perspective on, mm. on not only clinical life, but life in general have your priorities changed um you know has it given you more clarity less clarity uh, i don't know if you have anything to add to that jerry yeah um, give our, person, answer, you know, our perspective of that uh personally i mean i mean covid definitely gave me i guess more of an appreciation i mean especially early on um just time with time with my family especially my, my wife and that sort of stuff um it's tough especially any of our young entrepreneurs business owners um grinders of residency multiple jobs and that sort of stuff to get kind of lost in the sauce of things uh so covid kind of gave an opportunity to, you know i mean my wife was unfortunately furloughed for a while that sort of stuff just to spend more time have more dinners together shit we played board games i don't think we ever did that in our six plus years of being together um so little things like that um which also made me appreciate of like ah uh, do i want to be treating 40 to 60 hours a week or do i want to spend more time start planning things for like family 
Um, so that's what happened to me on a personal perspective and just appreciating a lot of the things that were taken away, just simple barbecues, concerts and that sort of stuff. And there's times where I was like, oh, I'll work or if something got prepared for, I'm like, all right, those opportunities now when they come up, I'm like, I'm taking them. Um, so from a personal spe- perspective, that's pretty much mostly how it kind of changed me. Uh, I believe for the better, um, which didn't come at cost of, well, unfortunately, sicknesses and deaths and everything like that. But um, there's a silver lining in everything. Clinically, uh, minus having to wear a mask all the time. You know, I can't sometimes see right underneath me, which is sometimes a bummer. But, um, you know, just kind of, I think a big thing is what I've seen is that additional stressor that is covid in the covid world how that impacted people physically what minus covid related symptoms but people you know especially in america in their 20s to 50 years of life have obviously a lot of stressors family school finances such and so forth but that little extra what that covid provided or a lot extra how much that was a straw that broke a lot of people's actual backs versus the camel's back. Um, And just taking it into perspective of, you know, what's going on in everyone's life and starting to address that and trying to connect those dots into people's pain. um, I started to see a lot of that, especially in like the unfortunate professions that I kind of get hosed over in the whole thing, like teachers, nurses all these sort of things and just seeing it kind of wear down on them so um you know that definitely you know from actually more of a paint science perspective um talking about that opening up those conversations it certainly helped me so but what about you brandon yeah i have a a lot of i guess mixed feelings about it you know there's there's you know two sides of the coin maybe even three sides if you count the sides of the actual coin itself um about this you know and you know this may ruffle some feathers but you know when i i'll get there in a second uh but for me personally uh yeah same thing it it kind of allowed me to take a step back i mean i I probably as our audience kind of can tell we have a lot of balls juggling up in the air and uh you know we're human it's hard to keep all of them going you know personal lives relationships business fellowship exec, you know advanced training whatever we have courses that we do podcasts uh whatever else i don't know we, we have a bunch of stuff going uh, on and, and you know we we let things drop all the time clearly we've had like a three or four month uh hiatus off of our podcast here um is that okay is that not okay you know you know different people will tell you different things you know obviously consistency is is important and we've talked about that too but you know, at certain times, sometimes you just have to go away for, you know, two, three, four, five months and, you know, grind away and focus on, you know, the major task at hand, or maybe it's two tasks at hand and, you know, do that really well. And then you can go back and do the other things. So, you know, obviously the podcast, you know, no offense to, uh, to anyone out there, it's not our number one thing. You know, we have, we have, uh, you know, girlfriends and wives and lives and businesses that, uh, you know, kind of take priority. And goose too uh, and goose yeah you got a dog too uh oh man how did i miss now? that uh, how did you miss that man goose is the i man. know I man saw a picture oh. the other day how did he grow so i texted Alyssa. i was like well, how is he a monster right now he's yeah, probably he's... like 60 pounds now at least if not more like, yeah he's a thick boy he, he grew like quick I, it's only been like two months since i've actually seen him yeah. Um, which it, real quick uh sidebar guys uh jeremy what kind of dog is he he's adorable he's got big goofy paws and just runs around oh. It's a big, big goof, uh, very derpy sort of dog. Um, he is a, so Goose, a name after my uh, favorite uh, movie, uh, Top Gun, favorite character, Goose. Um, so for all my Top Gun fans out there, hopefully the second one comes out soon. But um, he is a shepherd, Chow Chow, which would be his second most brand, I guess, uh, Lab, Husky, and Pit Mix. And then he's like a super breed of all things. He's a rescue. I think he came from one of the Carolinas or something like that. Fell instantly in love. But uh, yeah, he's my boy. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a, he's he's a thick boy. He's not getting. Oh, he's getting much longer. That's he hasn't gotten much taller of late. But that's my dude. 
Aside from that chihuahua, he's all alpha. He's an alpha dog. Get that. Wait, how much mm-hmm. shepherd's here? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Oh, well, he, by, uh, by breed and genetics, he is purely alpha. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, by oh. personality wise, he's now like, we'll see him like go play and he'll like start things with other dogs. And as soon as the other dog starts to go, he just oh, flops no. on his back and no. he just that, takes that, a beating. That's, that's nature versus nurture, man. Yeah, he, he got a little is. soft. No, uh, it good. depends no. on certain dogs and that sort of stuff. But he cracks me up and like, he's like, he's like, instigates, like, yeah, let's go play, let's go play. And then the other dog starts to like chase after him. He's like, no, nah, I'm good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Come rub my was. belly. I'm like, you're gonna be like twice the size of this dog one day. He's, yeah. But let's get it, you know. He doesn't cause any issues, thankfully. Oh. Um, but yeah, big addition to the family, to the Boyd family there, Goose Boyd. Uh, yeah. So back to uh, to what COVID's kind of changed things. Yeah. Uh, it allowed me personally to to learn. You know, I've I've wanted to learn. You know, more digital marketing, email marketing. All things I'm still trying to improve on and perfect, um, but it allowed me that ability to just take the time out. You know, we've had so many, um, like we just said, a lot of balls in the air, kind of always biting off more we can chew. It allowed, it kind of forced us to take that break. So we had to close down my office for I think it was four or five weeks, which initially was only going to be two, and then I know I was like, I'm just going to extend it. I'm working on this stuff. Um, not to say I enjoyed the, the, the downtime, but it allowed me to shift my, my vision, you know, elsewhere. So, you know, and it's proved well, I mean, we, we got our podcast on a nice rhythm last year. We, we, you know, I don't know how many X our following and followers, um, you know, from last probably, you know, summer to, uh, this past fall, winter, you know, past eight months there. Um, obviously we fell off a little bit. And allowed us to do that. Our courses, you know, grew, uh, you know, probably five times what they were. Um, so, and it's, and it's carried over into this year as well. You know, we have another, uh, four public courses going on and two private courses going on in the fall. So, you know, that's awesome that we've been able to do that. So it's been able to, to shift that way. Um, it's, you know, also showed me as a profession, are we, nimble enough to pivot when we need to mm-hmm. uh unfortunately a lot of private uh a lot of practices know a lot of people were furloughed you know maybe mm-hmm. we have to take a step back and why some of it is regulation and law everything takes so fucking long to do like we telehealth was automatically passed at least in new jersey i'm gonna talk in new jersey because that's where we live telehealth was automatically passed no problem some people were able to flip on a dime Come this past June, uh, telehealth ends and we no longer can do it. Well, if during a pandemic, we're able to just flip the switch and all the laws are dropped and we could just do whatever, why can't we continue doing it, right? Mm -hmm. We have rules and regulations that are under our normal practice act that now, now need to be dragged out into a telehealth. You know, and maybe I just don't have the the breadth and depth, you know, on this, uh, on that side of things. But I, a lot of it is just politics, and you know, who who's getting paid, and you know, things like that. Why these why these things take so long? But you know, we, we get we all got in the profession to to just help people first and foremost. You know, before business became a thing, before product productivity became a thing. You know, before all these things that you realize, um, you know, when you're out in the real world practicing, what happens. We, we all get into this this field to, to help people. And yet we have these laws um, that really, they, they say they're for the, the, the protection, but protection of whom? Like if somebody goes to, who's from New Jersey, goes on vacation to another state and they email you and you can't treat them because technically they're now in another state that you don't have jurisdiction in. How, like, why is that even a thing? Uh, because we're not licensed over there. And then we have this compact law that's coming to effect that's been coming into effect, at least in New Jersey for the past two to three years, if not more, that, you know, at least now, okay, we had a black swan event. Why wasn't this, okay, this is something we probably should address and, and, you know, make this push to the forefront and it doesn't, it actually gets buried 
you know, to probably one of the lower things uh, on the totem pole. And, you know, granted, there's probably other things that take more precedent, but it, I mean, that just goes on to a bigger, bigger topic that I just don't have the insight and, and um, I guess, breadth of knowledge to on why, you know, these things politically take so long, but they, they should be moved along faster. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm digressing back to, you know, were you, if you're, you know, a solopreneur or, or doing th- something on the side, were you able to move, you know, quickly and nimbly? Um, were you not able to? Were you furloughed at your company? I know Jeremy did a lot of telehealth uh, in the beginning. Uh, I did a, a little bit, to tell you the truth. I, I, uh, I just completely shut down. I wanted to use that time to, to work on other things, to improve my skill set in another aspect of life um or, or business whatever you want to call it yeah um versus sit home and watch a netflix and i'm gonna kind of you know go on this and i get everybody's you know deals with things differently and you know this was an unprecedented event in life but you know i've had many conversations with uh i'll, I'll talk just pts because that, that's our wheelhouse and you know uh that's what we know best that you know pts want to get better uh, or have voiced to me, they want to get better. They want to do a residency. They want mentorship. Or they they're burnt out at work. Or you know, the list goes on and on. You know what we're dealing with. And then it's like, okay, well, what have you been doing? And you know, all right, I've been furloughed. Okay, you know, it's unfortunate, but the government gave us. If you were furloughed, you probably made out more on on unemployment than you did in your your salary. Uh, you know, what were you doing in those two, three, four, even five months off, right? That you're, you're collecting paycheck and, and you're watching Netflix. You know, we had somebody at our course and, and, and not, I'm not trying to blow them at all, but, uh, you know, they want to improve and, and, and do a residency and things like that. And it's like, okay, well, there, there's these avenues you can go to. Oh, and you hem and haul. Well, I can't do it. Or I don't have the time or I'm this. And it's a million and one excuses. But then, you know, a topic of the hottest Netflix show comes up. And at that time it was uh, Tiger King. And that person yeah, knew every, every episode, every, I have no idea what Tiger King is about. I, I still haven't watched it. Um, but it's like, all right, you're complaining you don't have time, but yet you're up on every Netflix series that there is. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you just need to, to reflect a little bit. And, and this is where probably people aren't going to, you know, might be offended by what I'm about to say or whatever. But, uh, you know, it really comes down to, to discipline and to, you know, reflecting on, on what your goals are and, and do your actions uh, meet what you're trying to do. And it's a battle I struggle with every day. I'll be honest, you know, I, you know, I have aspirations and goals as you do, as everybody does, you know, but do your actions to meet that. Uh, and, you know, if you can't do something for, you know, five days, 10 days, and then you're complaining that it doesn't, you know, your life isn't where you want it to be, you know, you have to just really take a step back and, and look at, at what you're doing, you know, um, you know, we'll take weight loss, for example, you're, you're 100 pounds overweight, and you can't go on a diet for five days. And then in three months, you just complain on how you're still overweight, like you didn't get overweight in one day, and you're not going to lose it in a day. Um, and I know weight's always a, um, a sensitive topic. But you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, use an analogy here. Uh, I, I, to me, it really COVID really kind of opened up like, all right, we're getting a chance most people to, you know, enhance your life in some way, learn a new skill, better yourself or your relationship or whatever. Uh, You know, how much of, how many people were actually doing that and took the opportunity to do that? And how many people just watched a lot of movies and TV? Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's kind of, that's kind of my point. So if you're, you're out there complaining about your, your life or your situation or, you know, we talk about burnout a lot in our profession or unsatisfaction three to five years out, you know, and don't get me wrong, there, there's definitely a lot of flaws in, in just life in general. Um, but, you know, what, are, what can you do to improve your scenario? And, you know, what do you have control over that you can tangibly, tangibly try and affect? And I guess that's kind of my big wake up, wake up call, you know, this, this past year. 
you know, there's some great points. Um, I, you know, with my students and those sort of things. And I think a lot of it's people also throw into the mix is like, I don't have the money. There are such a breadth of free resources out there. Um, even to, or borderline $50 for a year. Like I get all kinds of ads from different groups and those sort of things where it comes out to legitimately pennies per day. Um, and then when it's like, oh, I mentioned those sort of things and people then think of the next excuse. It's always easy of time and finance, mm -hmm. but it's really, you're not putting the, the dedication in. You want all the perks that, um, you know, hard work has once you put all the hard work in, but you're not really willing to put it all in. Um, so I'll say to people like, listen, there's plenty of things with just journal articles. There's borderline, you know, you know, a couple pennies per day uh, mentorship groups of sorts or uh, you know video groups or whatever it may be um, there's so much and in the social media world and all that sort of stuff and not saying that's where you should get most of your education from but um, yeah it's all out there and we we really there's no excuse not to try and better yourselves a little bit every day um, something you know anybody who wants to ever interview here at, at my facility um, I'd say most of the time when I have conversations or interviews with prospective SPTs, they, I'm like, why do you want to be here? Like, oh, I dream it. I've always wanted to do sports PT. I'll do anything to get here. Almost everybody says that. And then I, my, you know, my response is like, all right, so what have you done? What have you done to get to this point or want to be into this field? Because this is niche. Um, it's usually, it's not like there's a sports physical therapist job on every corner, you know, especially if you're wanting to go into the, um, you know, the pro realm or the D1 realm or anything like that. Um, you guys should listen to Brian's episode that we did, I think the last episode or two episodes ago. But, um, and more often than not, a lot of them will be like, well, I went to school. I'm like, well, great. <laughs> You'll have to go to school to pass. Yeah. what else are you doing i went to pt school too and yes there's a lot of studying there's practicals there's grinding but i'd be a liar to say there wasn't time for other things mm -hmm. i worked at i worked two jobs and uh, i did stuff for clubs and those sort of things like what else have you done and then i'll put up the line of like what's the most recent article you read outside of school and a lot of them are just blank and I can tell you those students do not make it into my facility. Start young, get into the habits of it now. A lot of time blocking out time to do things other than your work day or your school day um, and set yourself up. Invest into it now. It's time, it's a grind now, but you'll set yourself up for success mm -hmm. and job security, which I guarantee you in 10 years, the whole perks of one of the perks of being a physical therapist is we always have job security because those lovely baby boomers from, you know, World War II and whatever, we will no longer have job security. Uh, eventually the, uh, the supply is not gonna, you know, what is it? The, the demand will be the supply. <laughs> yeah. Um, because now we're having PT programs cranking out you know, 50 to 100 kids per per class with hybrid classes with the, and that's a different topic for another day. GPAs are low, 100K. so 100K for two, I heard 2.75 GPA. Um, so it's taking away the competitiveness, you know, all this sort of stuff, but all of a sudden you're just going to saturate the job market. And when it's, you're 10 years out and you get replaced by some of the, some, you know, kid coming out of school because they cost $20,000 less than you. Well, what did you do to keep your job? Do you do things going above and beyond or you sat and watched Tiger King for three months? So unrelated rant there, but. <laughs> no, I think it's very related. Uh, you know, I, I think there's this perception and it's changing. I, I will say that it, it's changing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of it, Jeremy and I, we, we've been in this profession 10 years. Um, you know, we don't know everything, but we, we see a lot. We're, we take interns all the time. We take residents, take fellows. So, we, you know, we're seeing it across the gamut. 
it's changing, but there, there's a large still majority of, of people out there that think it stops when you graduate, when you get that, that uh, diploma and you get, um, you know, you get your license number, you know, like, and it, it, it doesn't, um, it really doesn't. It's begun. And like Jeremy said, and, you know, maybe Jeremy and I's clinic are, are few and far between where we want, you know, to provide, you know, the best care or close to the best care. Uh, as possible and we want people who are really just passionate and if you think that okay i did school and that's it, it ends there and you know that you know that's fine i guess you're more than welcome to it but you know then don't be uh, upset when you know you look five or ten years down into your career and it's uh not fruitful you don't like it you're trying to look to get out of uh physical therapy and and things of that nature so and this all is reflective of um covid yeah. yeah any anything else any other uh topics uh i'll throw the the maybe ethical dilemma i'm not a you know we're not huge into ethics here on the, this channel well no. I, say that. I don't mean it that we way. are I, we're very I don't mean ethical, that way, yeah. Yeah. but i mean like you know you know true ethical class it's not ethical course that's what i meant oh that's um, like actual class itself like yeah like, like the theory. ethics you have to take ethics every two years you know that two that years stuff. yeah um so that's what i mean by that uh you know what ethical dilemmas have popped up in in your practice and you know because of covid um you know and again this you know answer this i guess at home or, or feel free to dm us but anything on your end Jerry, that you feel maybe stood out um i know it's hard it's been a blur it's been now at this point what like 16 months 18 months since so uh, we first were yeah we're with this I mean, now it's just like Definitely originally on uh, the whole, whether to stay open or not, that was, that was, I was dying at that decision. Literally, I, I mean, there's stressors with owning a business and that sort of stuff, but I sleep well, like my head hits a pillow, I'm out. I don't try to stay up to night thinking about things, but that was definitely one. It was like, all right, I, I know places are closing down. It's like, do I stay open? Do I stay open for my patients or you know, all these other places are doing, so there must be, should I like hop in with them? Um, I remember that, that was one that, you know, definitely took some, some maybe an hour, a couple hours, just thinking, I'm like, what to do? And, you know, ultimately in that decision, I sent the entire staff home. As I said, we did a lot of telehealth. I'm like, like you don't need to be here. Um, not as much hands on, and I kept a couple of my ACLs there just so unfortunately just had their surgery right beforehand. And, um, uh, I think I had some uh, uh one guy was uh, awful, one of the worst dicks lumbar dicks I've ever seen. He was like, I'm ready to chop off my leg. And this guy was like, special forces at one point in his life, now a recruiter and whatnot. Um, but I, I think that was a huge ethical dilemma. I'm like, am I? Am I, you know, doing the server? Am I exposing people? Am I, you know, is this something not right when other places they have to close down and we're staying open? So that was probably the biggest one. Um, that is now it's the, uh, do you require staff members, students be vaccinated, that sort of thing. And uh, luckily for us, just everyone's kind of been doing it. So I don't have to worry about that. But yeah, it's come across and I'm sure there were some previous ones, you know, spreading out patients appropriately when to let them back um those sort of things but that was definitely my most intense one and again we decided to stay up and I'm glad we did again we weren't making a ton of money off of it but it's really just for those couple of patients but uh what about you brandon yeah that's that's key uh do you stay open for for patients who you need therapy uh you know post-ops they just had surgery and and now what you know, their outcomes are going to be, you know, trash if, if you send them home, um, you know, is, is telehealth still viable for that patient? You know, is that appropriate for them at that stage? You know, that's an ethical dilemma. Closing, closing is big. Um, this may be yeah. ethical on the patient side, ethical of the staff. Do you keep them on? Do you furlough them? Mm. Do you let them go? Like, you know, all these things uh, we end up keeping, um, you know, keeping staff on for, for a while um and this is before we even knew ppp was a thing but you know mm -hmm. yeah. uh we initially you know closing with the thought process closing 12 uh, two weeks or four weeks um 
All right. You know, do you keep them on? They're not, you know, mm. not, you know, traditionally working, you know, what's that look like? You know, um, I, I took myself off payroll for a little bit. Um, you know, so, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck with, uh, dealing with and trying to navigate through those waters and really these unprecedented times, uh, yeah. you know, staying, staying open versus closing, or when you do reopen, do you elongate your schedule? Do you not, do you minimize the amount of people in there? Do you require masks? Do you not? If some patients don't want to wear the mask. Some do. Some people believe in COVID. Some don't, you know, and, and yeah. you're, you know, you have to, you know, play the uh, kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, PC card in, in trying mm -hmm. to manage every different personality that walks to the door. Uh, you touched upon it in terms of being vaccinated. Um, I guess being smaller, we get, you know, to, it's a gift or a curse that maybe, we, you know, is not as formal of, uh, you know, HR or, or, you know, requirements. Some people, some people are dealing with, you know, get vaccinated or you're not, un, you're not going to be employed. Um, you know, my, my company, we have, uh, two people not vaccinated. We have two people vaccinated all, all personal choices. Um, I'm, I'm not vaccinated. Um, you know, and you know, my reasons go, you know, far beyond this, um, this podcast itself, but in terms of my staff, I left it up to them. If they felt comfortable doing it, great. If not, you know, that's your call. Um, mm. but we're going to wear masks at least if you're not. You know, so at right this point, we, we still wear masks and then, you know, most of our clientele is uh, vaccinated, but we still have, you know, percentage that's not and don't want to, to ever get it. So, um, you know, and now that with the mass regulations lifted, you have some people that are not vaccinated and don't wear masks, you know, people mm -hmm. that are vaccinated and wear masks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, there's no right or wrong answer at this point, but these are all things that we have to deal with day to day. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and if you're at a clinic where you guys have lift mask precautions, cool. You know, are you guys putting masks on if a patient feels uncomfortable? You know, so these are, you know, all just kind of day-to-day -day things that, um, you know, we're all dealing with. I think it's good to just mm -hmm. kind of talk about and get them out in the open and see what other people are doing and kind of go from there. That's, uh, yeah, some crazy things that have happened. I'd like to kind of go off with something that you said in regards for a lot of people who reach out to us it's mostly about their jobs and how they're not happy and if you get furloughed or let go by a big corporate company that probably has millions if not billions <laughs> of like money and assets and all that sort of things and yeah. they didn't allow you to at least work from home which is what i had my staff do and that sort of stuff um and then they get you back and you're back to the same productivity levels like uh i think your resident or justin's friend was correct they were able to they came back or whatever but they had to see the same amount of patients but a less days day. that long was day. it they had to all elongate their day so let's say they worked till seven normally they had to stay till nine nine p.m yeah. to, they're coming they in the early same amount. Or see the same amount of people yeah um so you should really revalue um your where you work and those sort of things and yeah again i would say places not to say out brandon's and i's are the you know god's gift to the world of clinics or those sort of things but they're probably better places than the places i'll just you know throw it by the wayside or said screw you or force you to go back and the also potentially ethical dilemma where it's just like well, I got right back to work. We're in the heat of COVID and I'm somehow still treating four patients per hour in a place where two other therapists are sitting and the six feet distance didn't really apply and that sort of stuff. Because again, they don't really care about that. They're caring about the, the money side of things. So, you know, you know, sometimes we have to get into those situations. I've told even some students, I'm like, listen, you know, you know, take a you know, if you have to take a bad job for a little bit, take it, but don't settle on that. And I had too many fellow classmates or people that had too much promise. They they started working at a bad place just because, you know, they have to pay off student loans. And then two, three years down the road, they're still at that place. And anytime you ask them, like, hey, you going to go somewhere else or anything like that? Oh, yeah, 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 eventually. Then five years later, they're becoming real estate agents. 
but uh yeah you know definitely uh caused a lot of evolution and pivoting and um a lot of things that happened on both of our ends but lucky and blessed to have made it through ish hopefully yeah. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully the it come back. Us and we're good. Yeah. Hopefully, we get some weird variant that we have to deal with now. Yeah, it's crazy Delta stuff. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully things you know don't regress at all. Um, but um, you know, I think you even mentioned it. You know, you talked to someone was it a financial advisor, accountant, or something like that. If you made it through, especially that real rough period where you had closed or, yeah. you know, there was really no ec- economy going on, um, you'll probably make it through. So, um, yeah. you know, glad to have made it through that part. So I think that's always important for a business owner. I remember BSR where Ernie was owner and that sort of stuff. They make it through um, Superstorm Stan- Sandy and that literally yeah. shut down an office for, I forgot how long because of like damages and that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, but they made it through and it's something yeah. that he mentioned. And I was just like, I'm in the middle of like mainland yeah, New Jersey. Nothing's going to fucking happen to me. And all of a sudden yeah. I was like, well, unless it comes to a point where like some robots come in and they can do the same shit as us. We're, we're like, we're pretty good where we're at, you know, no natural disasters. We don't get earthquakes. We don't get fucking tornadoes really. Um, I was like hurricanes. Yeah, we should be probably be okay. Yeah. Huh? So yeah, but I was just like, I mean, no. Yeah. But we're so far from the from the shore. I was like, yeah, yeah, you may get some water flooding, maybe, but nothing too serious. But then COVID happened, so it was good to hopefully fully come out on the other side. But I guess time will tell. But um, yeah, anything else there, Brandon? Yeah. Um, actually, tying in, I'm sorry, this is popped in my head. No, this is good. We're gonna wrap up. Um. Uh, you, yeah, we had asked, you know, how had COVID changed things and, and you know, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, I guess, we're, you know, both in physical therapy that, you know, what we do as a profession and just in life. And we had that, uh, that podcast. Can't remember if we talked about it or I just emailed about it. But there was that Adam Minkins podcast with uh, Chad Cook. And, uh, you know, they were debating the interview, yeah. therapy or not and exercise, whatever, fine. And Chad Cook, had brought up a, a great point. And I think this really goes to, to COVID as well. And, and you know, granted, um, you know, obviously COVID is a, you know, a bad thing. And it's unfortunately taking a lot of people's lives. But, you know, whether it's a Therex or, or manual therapy or both, uh, Chad Cook had brought up a, a good point. You know, everything we do is short term. And, you know, a lot of the changes, you know, that need to occur, are they happening outside of therapy? Like we can only be kind of accountable for so much. And and it really comes down to uh, psychosocial and socioeconomic uh, concerns and and the environment different people are in, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of going back to how COVID has hit different people uh, and Mm -hmm. different socioeconomic people, different races, different genders and things like that. But kind of going back to, you know, what we can control and uh, being able to pivot. And and I think a lot of it, um, it, for the most part, uh, you know, people who are younger, people who are in shape, people who have less comorbidities tend to do better with this than, you know, maybe some of the older people obviously can't help but age, but um, obviously, you know, weight, uh, comorbidities and things like that are playing a role into it. Uh, And granted, not everything you can control, and not, um, you know, but it, it does kind of show you on, on a mass scale, you know, socioeconomically and psychosocially and just environmental upbringing and, and perspective on, on how how something like this can affect people, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we, we're in a unique situation to be able to, you know, act and help people and, you know, be that, you know, caretaker or, or primary care provider and getting people mobilized and getting people moving and, and, and things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think we should, you know, reflect on that standpoint and, mm-hmm. you know, not necessarily argue left or right, but uh, what, what's the bigger issue at hand? Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I have a, a full wrap up for that, but I think it's just something that kind of popped in my head, like, all right, there, there's some bigger issues at, at heart here that need to be changed if, you know, change is going to happen. So that's really all I got.
Yeah. No, I, th- I, th- I think it's, it's something that we need to do. I think, I mean, just being on social media, which every time I'm on it, I'm like, I should just stop. It's like constant, you know, battling between mm-hmm. camps. Um, and then you look into the comments and everyone has to throw in their two cents and everything like that. And again, you know, what's the bigger picture? You know, we talked about it earlier in the episode here. It's just like, yeah, we have three different fellows, three different programs. And we, you know, we all did a good job of helping the individual, maybe different styles, slightly different you know ways to look at things but you know that's that's the beauty of our profession and is getting people moving um guy who graduated pt school is that's his his line for his business is uh i think move more die less <laughs> um yeah. uh, he's in like a crossfit gym and that sort of stuff but it's true uh yeah, and we're the best people huh and so there's research that supports that, that yeah. Story. yeah that's it uh, you mentioned old and that sort of stuff. And there's plenty of these over 100, over 90 years old that survived this. And more often than not, they're the ones that are walking around, moving around, exercising and that sort of stuff. So we're definitely seated in the best position to do that. And, uh, um, you know, I prefer to do it in the clinic versus over telehealth. And again, I tried, uh, people kind of circled back, but you know, uh, whatever means it takes, uh, we have the tools to get it done. So I think, uh, I mean, personally for us, I think for you as well, when we talk about business and that sort of stuff, there's definitely been a, I think a spike up in, in physical therapy since mm-hmm. COVID, which is surprising being most of it. It's so in person and people are so distant for such a long period of time. Maybe it's the human interaction. Maybe it's the fact that People couldn't get surgeries for a prolonged period of time. Uh, Maybe it's the people are sitting for a while. Now they're getting up and being active. Maybe vice versa. People are way too active because they have way too much freaking time on their hands. But overall, you know, I think we're we're growing. And I think COVID actually kind of spiked that up. Um, So, you know, hopefully this kind of fuels things and combined with advocacy and us keeping true to our profession and wanting to do more because we are the experts in uh, movement analysis and movement experts. And just overall, I think we're the best facilitators of healing, whether we are movement people or manual therapists, whoever it may be, um, you know, hopefully we're getting more of that narrow musculoskeletal pie that we always kind of talk about here, but um, yeah, some yeah. good talking points. Well, I guess, uh, cool. I guess we'll wrap up. Let me make a few, few yeah. announcements here. We have, um, well, it's July now, but we have, uh, the summer's going to go by in a, an instance like we always do. We got four courses. Sorry, July. Out. Yeah, I know. Freaking crazy. Oh my God. I haven't been to the shore once, uh, which is. I, want, I went, but it was raining. So it doesn't really care. Oh, it's awful. Man. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're all good. We have, uh, we have our, um, our four courses, our four public courses coming up in September. We have our cervical thoracic course in uh, September 11th to 12th at Pursue PT in Verona, New Jersey. Uh, Jeremy is then hosting the next course, uh, Lumbo Pelvic Management at Trifecta, October 16th and 17th down in Glassboro. Uh, we then have our extremity manipulation course, November 6th, uh, Pursue PT. And then we round out the year with our uh, probably our most... Um, I guess our famous, I don't know, famous is the right word, but our biggest uh, course of the year, uh, spinal manipulation course, which always is a sell out there, December 4th and 5th um, in, uh, at Pursuit PT in Verona as well. So those are our four uh, public courses. If you guys, uh, you know, look at improved clinical decision making, manual skills, clinic, uh, thought process, things like that, uh, maybe you just need CEUs. Uh, in New Jersey, we're, we're coming up uh, at the end of the year yes, sir. Um, as, uh, you know, the end of the credentialing cycle. So uh, they're all approved for CEUs. So we have that. And then we also have our um, our mentorship platform. Uh, you know, obviously, I picked me and Jeremy's brain. We have our, our third fellow, Kyle. We host bi-monthly course, um, virtual round calls, not courses, calls. We have a discussion board you could tap into daily. We have, you know, over 600 articles, over 100 40 videos on different techniques and exercises and things of that nature. So pretty comprehensive um, mm-hmm. platform there. Uh, any questions, feel free to reach out to, to me or Jeremy um, or DM us on, on Instagram or whatever the case may be. 
but yeah, yeah. And Jeremy, anything else? No, and uh, those platforms and that sort of stuff are less than the co- price of coffee per day. So for your coffee drinkers, uh, talking about finances, you know, remove that excuse out of your uh, repertoire. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, everyone seems to be enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, being a part of it. But uh, yeah, no, all great. Thanks for uh, for coming on and playing chestnut checkers and uh, you know, increasing that learning. It's good to be back. And uh, yeah, cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>